So we're going to now look at some modeling questions where you have to come up with your own exponential model because sometimes the question that's going to uh, sometimes the question will ask you to find an exponential model but it doesn't give you the starting form. So if they don't give you the starting form then what you can do is you can say that a general exponential model will be in this form here where a is a constant and k is a constant e is obviously Euler's number and we've got t which is just the function of time. So if k is greater than zero, it will be exponential growth. So we know this, if it's a positive power, it's going to be a kind of growth shape like this. And if k is less than zero, it's going to be a decay, it will be this kind of shape. So I thought I'd just quickly show you what this looks like. Um, obviously, we don't have to do it with Euler's number, you could do it with a different number, but we just generally use e because it's sort of the, the classic number to use. So on Desmos that we've got here, you can see that if I change the value of a, um, it changes the point where it crosses the y-axis and usually that's kind of like the starting population or the starting value of something. So I've just got mine going between sort of minus 10 and 50. Obviously it could be any number at all. And for this value of k, you can see that when you change the value of k, the higher the value of k, kind of like the steeper that exponential growth is. So again, if I kind of zoom this out a bit, that line is, if I just squish this, you can see that when you increase k, it becomes like steeper exponential um, exponential growth. And then obviously when k becomes a negative number, it becomes exponential decay. And you can see that this red line here is decaying when k is a negative number. OK, so let's actually just dive in with a question that we've got here. It says, in a simple model, the value v of a car depends on its age t in years. The following information is available for car A. Its value when new is 20,000 and its value after one year is 16,000. So when it's new, in other words, when the time is zero, the value is 20,000. And when it's one year old, the value of the car is 16,000 pounds. And it wants you to use an exponential model. So as soon as you see exponential model, we think it's going to be y equals a e to the kt. Um, to form for car A, a possible equation linking V with T. Um, you can probably hear in the background that I'm at school today because we're just preparing for kids coming back to school, which is why um, that school bell has just gone off. Sorry about that. Um, OK, when it's talking about car A, we're not talking about this A that we've got here. Probably I should have used a different letter. I probably should have done like Y equals B E to the KT, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to be using this same model that I was starting up here. OK, so let's sub in those values and see if we can find out what A and K are. So we're going to say that Y, uh, well, not Y actually either, we're going to be saying that it's going to be the, the value of the car. So the value of the car is 20,000, and that's going to be equal to A e to the 0. And e to the 0 is 1, so A is just equal to 20,000 here. And then I'm going to say that the value is 16,000 when the value of uh, t is 1. So it's just going to be a e to the k. Now remember, we know that a is 20,000 here. So I can divide 16,000 by 20,000. Obviously, I can get rid of these three zeros, is e to the k. And so we've got 16 divided by 20, which is 0.8. And so k is equal to ln of 0 0.8. And the ln of 0 0.8 is a negative. And we get that k is negative 0 0.223 to three decimal places. And so that's not surprising that it's negative. Because as you can see here, the value of the car was 20,000 and has become 16,000. So we can see that it's exponential decay, which means that it's good that k here is a negative number. And it says, find a possible equation linking V with T. So I actually need to say what the final bit is going to be. So I'm going to say that the value of the car is going to be equal to A E to the K T. And that's a possible equation. There are other values that you could have done. Instead of it being with E, we could have done a different number. But E is just the classic one that we're going to use. It then says that the value of a car is monitored over a 10 year period. Its value after 10 years is 2000 pounds. Evaluate the reliability of your model in light of this information. So it's saying something that it's going to be its value after 10 years is 2000. The value after 10 years is 2000 pounds. So let's just use our model and see what happens with those two things that we've got. So let's do for part B. When t equals 10, our formula would be 20,000 multiplied by e to the minus 0 0.223 times 10. Let's see what that's going to give us. 
So we're going to do 20,000 multiplied by e to the minus 0 0.223 times 10, which is 2,150 pounds and 57 pence. So our model suggests the price will be 2,150 pounds and 57 pence. But the real price is 2,000 pounds. And so we now need to evaluate the model. OK, we've made a comparison here. Now, you could probably argue this either way. Or you could say that 2,000 pounds and 2,150 pounds is pretty far apart from each other. Or you could say that they're pretty close. The mark scheme says that they're pretty close, but I think you would also get the mark for saying that these are quite far apart from each other. But I'm going to go with what the mark scheme said. I'm going to say that £2,150 is close to the real value of £2,000. So the model appears to be reliable. But you know what? You could have argued it the other way around as well. It then says the following information is available for car B. So this here is a different car. It has the same value when new as car A, and its value depreciates more slowly than that of car A. Explain how you would adapt the equation found in A so that it could be used to model the value of car B. So it depreciates more slowly. Let's just quickly go back and have a look at the Desmos app. So de depreciating more slowly is where I want to think about what value of k is. So we've got the k is minus 2.23 or minus 2.2 or something like that. Now, if I want the, the cost of the car to depreciate more slowly, I want to make the value of k become bigger. I want to increase the value of k so that that gradient is less steep. If I decrease the value of k, look at how steep that line is. It's actually going to decrease in value. So I want to increase the value of k, but I obviously still need to keep it uh, negative. So what I'm going to do for part c of the question is I would say increase the value of k in my equation but still keep it negative. Okay. I wouldn't change the value of this part though, because it still has the same starting value. So let's have a look at the mark scheme. We came up with this equation. We've got that the model is close, and they've said that the value of k should be increased, which is what we've got here. We're not going to use this one, we're just going to say that the value of k should be increased. Okay, you might like to have a go at this one that we've got here. So I suggest pausing the video and trying this one yourself. I'll just zoom out so you can see the whole thing. But I'm going to go through this one as well, because it's not many modelling questions like this in the textbook, but um, it's good for us to practice these. So pause this and have a go. OK, it says that a company plans to extract oil from an oil field. The daily volume of oil, V, measured in the barrels that the company will extract from this oil field depends upon the time, T years, after the start of drilling. So you can tell we've definitely got some modelling happening. The company decides to use a model to estimate the daily volume of oil that will be extracted. The model includes the following assumptions. The initial daily volume of oil extracted from the field will be 16,000 barrels. So it's always going to be 16,000. And you can actually see that on both of these graphs here. The daily volume of oil that will be extracted exactly four years after the start of drilling will be 9,000. So you can see we've got this 4, 9,000 and this 4, 9,000. And the daily volume of oil will extracted will decrease over time. So you can see this graph is decreasing and this graph is also decreasing. The diagram shows the graphs of two possible models. And so let's just quickly talk about these two models. This first model is going to be a linear model. You can see how it's a straight line. And this second one that we've got here is going to be an exponential decay. So we've got these two kinds of models. Now, for the first one, it says use model A to, to estimate the daily volume of oil that will be extracted exactly three years after the start of drilling. 
and then write down a limitation of using model A. Now there's many different ways about this. If you wanted to, you could come up for an equation of the straight line and then you could substitute in the value of three, or you could just think really sensibly about these two coordinates. If we're trying to find out what it is after three years that we've got here, and because it's a straight line, we could just use some kind of like proportion, proportional reason, reasoning to think about what's going on. So this part, it's decreased from 16,000 to 9,000, which is going to be a decrease of 7,000. And so if we have come three quarters of the way along here, then I'm going to want to come three quarters down here. So I'm actually just going to do 16,000 minus three quarters of 7,000. And so that predicts that this value on there is going to be 10,750. It's a bit of a quicker way of doing that. I'm just going to say that one more time because we're saying that we're coming three quarters of this way along the bottom because this is obviously four. We also want to go three quarters of the distance down this line as well. So that's why it's 16,000 minus three quarters of that gap, which is 7,000. So it's 10,750. That's what I would be estimating for it three years after the start of drilling. It then says to write down a limitation of using model A. Well, when I look at this model, it looks like after a certain amount of time, you're going to be extracting a negative amount of oil, which doesn't make sense. So I'm going to say in model A, when T becomes large, the oil extracted becomes negative. which doesn't make sense. That's what I think is the biggest limitation of Model A. Now here comes the part that's linked to what we've been doing. It says using an exponential model and the information given in the question, find a possible equation for Model B. So we're going to come up with um, a, an exponential model for this one. And then it says using your answer to be part one, estimate the daily volume of oil that will be extracted three years after the start of drilling. So here we did it three years after the start of drilling. We're also going to be doing it in this one. We're going to say after three years, how much will it be? And they, they might be similar to each other, but they're probably going to be um, a bit different because they're different models. So we're going to use this information. We're going to use this bit here and this bit here to help us. So for part B, we're going to assume that the general model is that the volume is going to be A E to the K T. Now you can probably tell me what A is straight away. You can probably just see that we know A is the value where it crosses. But I'm going to say that the volume extracted, 16,000, equals A E to the K times zero, which is just zero. And so A is just 16,000. Now for the next bit, I'm going to say that when t is equal to 4, the volume extracted is going to be 9,000. So 9,000 equals a e to the 4k, because in this case, k, uh, t was equal to 4. So I get 9,000 equals, well, a from the previous part is 16,000. So I'm going to do 9,000 divided by 16,000, cancel out those zeros, equals e to the 4k. So that's 9 over 16 equals e to the 4k. And I'm going to take logs of both sides. I'm going to do an ln of both sides so that I get ln of 9 over 16 equals 4k. And so I'm going to say a quarter of ln of 9 over 16 is equal to k. Let's see what that is. So I'm going to do a quarter of ln of... 9 over 16. And it's good that we've got a negative there because we can tell it's a decay. So we've got minus 0 0.1438. Minus 0 0.1438. Oh, maybe I should have done it to um, three decimal places. So we'll do minus 0 0.144. So let's find a possible equation for the model. So our equation is V equals a e to the k t so it's a decay model then it just says using your answer estimate the volume of oil that will be extracted exactly three years after drilling so part two we're just going to say that t is equal to three and we'll find the volume by doing 16,000 e to the minus 0 0.144 multiplied by three 
In fact, I've even got that K value stored in my calculator. So I'm just going to do 16,000 E, and it made, that's my K value is the answer, multiplied by three. And we get 10,392, what was it measured in? Is it liters? Barrels. So we can say barrels. And that's good because we're not going to get, we're not going to run rump that rounded up or down. It's going to be 10,392 barrels to the nearest barrel there. And the good thing about this is it's pretty close to 10,070. It makes sense that it's less because it's kind of got this sort of curved in shape. If you compare it, you can see that in our exponential model, it will be lower down when we're at three. So let's check if we got all of this right. We've got the 10,750. Um, we've got that then it becomes negative when t increases, which doesn't make sense. We've then got this model that we have here. I have it in its numerical form. And then they've got AWRT 10,400. AWRT means answers which round to 10,400. And our answer does round to 10,400. So um, that is the modeling kind of stuff that is not covered in the textbook but is necessary and there's loads of exam questions. If you wanna see more of these, there's a few more in my exam question document in the Bison Maths Google Drive that you can find from the about section on my channel homepage.